Uh, so I, I tried to be a little bit uh, provocative with the title digitalized or digitally wasted. I, I think um, many, many digital transformations in, in industry are, are being wrongly guided by these uh, fail uh, preconceptions and, and wrong misconceptions of, uh, of the way we, which we do business or which we should be doing business uh, be to better serve our customers. So of course, in 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 lean, we, we we talk about solving more of our customers' problems with less resources, so, and I think digitalization has gone down this uh, classical management route of trying to optimize current processes rather than to grow the business and solve more problems for for the for the customers. So I think uh, digitalization has mass potential to to disrupt business models of organizations if only we we use it correctly. And I think learning has a, a large part to play in that. Um, so when I started uh, my career in Lean some, some 15 years ago, I was working for a, a German company in South Wales uh, called Ina Bearings, part of the Scheffler Group. Um, and we, we had just been through in, in around the, the millennium, turn of the millennium, we, we went through a, a culture change program, which was called Al Greater Than C. Um, and that meant that the rate of learning should be greater than the rate of change. And I think uh, ch change today is all around us. It, it's been around us <laughs> forever. Uh, things are changing. New, new technologies are coming on board. Old technologies are disappearing. Um, and the only way to really survive as an organization is to adapt. And, and we can only really adapt if we're willing to learn. And I think that means we need to... Uh, we need to become curious as uh, individuals, as managers, as organizations in, in order to, to learn and, and develop our, our skills and, uh, and solve more problems, uh, basically. Um, so what, I, what I'm trying to say here is that smart technology, which is emerging from Industry 4.0. I mean, Industry 4.0 became a thing in, about 10 years ago in, uh, in Germany at the, at the Hanover Fair 2011. And we're faced with a plethora of new smart technologies, which are driving and disrupting the way in which we do business, or at least they should do. Um, but I think the smart technologies aren't really so smart when we use them just to digitize waste. And, and we see it a lot of time in industry when, when you go and, uh, I mean, in Lean, we're very fond of Gamba walks, right? So Gamba is the, is the Japanese term for the real place, to go and see at the real place and really understand well, what is happening. And I think when, when we go and actually look at the ways in which some organizations are applying digitization, um, it, it's just being used to, to automate waste. And I mean, these wasteful activities shouldn't be there in the first place, you know. Um, so it's, uh, th then we need to really engage our brains and, and start to think. And I think that's what's, uh, that's what's going to be one of the major messages in, in my presentation today. If we look back at uh, the developments of, of Toyota and uh, thereafter Toyota Motor Company, um, I think when back in the day when Toyota was making these uh, spinning and weaving looms, um, the, the one in the picture is the Type G automatic loom. This is where they really uh, developed the concept of Jidoka, which is automation with a human touch. Now, I think this, this is a great example of a smart technology, right? So back in, uh, I think it was 1906, 1907, when they were starting with this, uh, these mechanisms, which you see there are, there are hundreds, if not thousands of um, tension followers following the weft of these uh, spinning machines. And if one of these were to break, tension follower would stop the machine. Um, and then uh, a light or a noise would uh, begin and, and it would draw the attention to the operator to go and, uh, to go and re recoil then the, uh, the, the thread and, and make the machine continue to produce a good quality uh, fabric. Now, I think the whole idea here was to the respect for people principle. So instead of having one man watch one machine, this operator was then able to uh, observe, I think, I think up to 32 machines simultaneously because of this Jidoka mechanism. Um, so that's really a smart technology in action. I think uh, when we're moving into Industry 4.0, uh, people are talking about the Jidoka 4.0 concept. I can, I can uh, have some thoughts about that later on in the presentation. I guess it's uh, some, of, some of the projects we're working with here in Norway. <clears throat> 
within zero defect manufacturing, of course, we're looking at using sensor technology and uh, actuators within production lines to not only detect and, and, uh, and correct uh, defects, but to prevent and predict them as well. So I think the more and more technology we can use with data and uh, quality data in particular, we can, we can use uh, algorithms to try and predict when a machine is going to end up producing defects. So I think that's the way things are moving in terms of Jidoka 4.0. But of course, Jidoka as a concept, oh, sorry. I will, could you hear it? Then I will play the uh, example. I forgot it was a video. I thought it was just a picture. Sorry. It's, so this is the Type G automatic loom at uh, the uh, Toyota Museum in Nagoya. Oh, sorry. So it's so simple, such a simple mechanism that when that one warp broke, the tension follower stopped the machine. And then the operator is able to tie the warp back together and, and continue to spin the same quality piece of fabric without it continuously creating scrap. Um, so, so back to the, the problem with Jidoka, I mean, studies of Jidoka are very li limited. Um, and, and the studies that do exist of Jidoka, particularly in, uh, in academic publications, uh, Jidoka is often reduced to stopping a process when an abnormality has been detected so the defects can be avoided. But Jidoka as a concept is much more than error catching. And I think the, the mechanism itself is, is cool. It's smart technology. It, it, you can catch an error and prevent it from being passed on in the line. But the concept itself, it's, it's more of a condition. Okay, so I'll talk more about conditions afterwards, but Jidoka, it's one of the conditions of Toyota production system, which engages everybody in thinking and learning. So, so having Jidoka present in your system encourages people to think well why have this warp broken now and it, and and how can we stop it from breaking in the future so i think it, it drives this learning process of discovery so i think that's that's really what all of these conditions in uh, in the toyota production system are, are about it's about creating the, the thinking people system so we say the tps stands for toyota production system but it should should much better stand for the thinking people system so Jidoka and Andon, then it's about stop call wait. So in this instance, the machine stop and call the operator and then wait. And I think uh, the Andon principle is just the same. So uh, on the on the production line, the assembly line in, in Toyota, you have the Andon cord, right? So if you encounter or discover a problem, you can you can pull the cord, and it doesn't stop the line immediately. Um, it, so the, the line will continue, and if you can, and if you can uh, overcome the challenge or the problem that you've encountered within the pitch time, the, the, the line will continue. But if by the time you reach your, your, the end of your pitch within the assembly line and problems not stop, you'll stop the line. And then this will bring the, the team leader over, maybe the supervisor, some maintenance personnel, everybody come and run and, and think together. What is this problem? How do we solve it here and now? And I think that's uh, that's part of the secret to, to Toyota. There are no real secrets, but I think the the, the major secret is that uh, Toyota are just a serious company. So so given the instance when you encounter a problem on the line, we stop it, we face the problem, uh, and and we solve the problem here and now, kaizen now. And I think that's that's the biggest secret. It's it's the seriousness for improvement in order to engage everybody in this thinking people system. Um, for those of you interested, I can, I, can share a, uh, I can share a link with you at the end, Nancy, but uh, we, we published a paper on this a couple of years ago, so where, where we really re re rethunk uh, Jidoka systems, not just under the automation perspective, but also under the learning perspective in a, in a digital lean manufacturing world. And I think uh, there, there we cover this, um, this uh, historic developments of Jidoka 1 to Jidoka 4.0 um, on the different types of, uh, for example, poker yokes, which have been developed in organizations to, to prevent uh, defects from being created to the more um, uh, industry 4.0 uh, 
type uh, prediction and prevention mechanism, which are starting to emerge in, in manufacturing nowadays. So I can share this uh, publication with those who are interested in, in reading that afterwards. Um, <clears throat> so looking back to Toyota then, um, it's important to, to see that, that Lean, it, it's not a set of tools to be implemented for operational excellence. Um, for, for many years, I was uh, uh, under the impression that that's what it is. And I think many people are, are still there today. But uh, what I've come to realize um, from, for example, from writing the first shingle winner, we had the, the Routledge Companion to Lean Management, where we looked at lean in, in different organizational settings and different industries, is that lean is a very misunderstood uh, business phenomenon. Um, and I think those that are less mature in, uh, in the lean understanding and the lean implementation tend to look at it as a set of tools and techniques to be implemented to realize excellence, which actually is, is more about static optimization than learning and growth. Um, so what I come to realize uh, some years ago now is that actually lean, it's, it's, more, it's, it's an education system um, for uh, creating the learning organization and for uh, growing your business to enable you to solve more customer problems with less resources. And I like this picture. I think this picture says a lot. So uh, we have a lot of these uh, board meetings in lean organizations, but I think it's it's the content and the discussions and 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 the, the looks on the faces which says it all. I mean, it's, sometimes we, we we feel we need to do these board meetings because we're doing a lean program, but that's not the whole idea. I mean, the, the idea is to come together as a team and create space to think as a team, as individuals in a learning organization. And I think um, it's very important that we're able to challenge each other on, on what we see around us on the Gemba. Um, so that's why we create these conditions, uh, which Toyota called the Toyota production system uh, to help us frame uh, any problems we might find in an organization. So you see here the Toyota production system. We have the just-in-time, the Jidoka, the standardized work, basic stability, employee satisfaction. And, and, uh, and many, of, many of these could, could be understood as a, as a set of tools or a tool or a best practice, right? Uh, Just-in-time, we implement it so that we can save money and uh, have less inventory. Yeah, okay, that's... That's one of the outcomes of just in time, perhaps. But the whole idea with just in time is that, <clears throat> you know, when <laughs> I'll tell you the story, when, when Toyota realized uh, early on at the, in the beginning of the Toyota Motor Company that if they were going to introduce an engineering change uh, into the way they, 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 they build the car or design the car, they, they bring in an engineering change before they could actually go to the new. Uh, standard, they had to consume all of the inventory that they had on hand. And this, this meant that it go three, six, or even 12 months before they could actually bring in the engineering change, which was crazy. If they wanted to bring it in now, they have to write off all the stock, right? So the idea was that we, we produce just what is needed in the amount needed right now, just in time. Um, so that's that's one of the reasons for just in time. And of course, another reason for just in time, or what many of us would call a, a flow production, single piece flow, is that if we discover a problem, we find it first now. We don't have to look through uh, hundreds or, or even thousands of components that are in inventory that could also have this problem. So it's it's about um, it's about discovery. So we create flow to bring these problems to the surface. It's, it's all supporting the discovery process. And then, of course, the Jidoka system comes hand in hand with that to help us discover these quality problems and not pass on defects uh, within, within the system. All of this, of course, building on the standardized work, which, um, which is also an important part of continuous improvement. And I think the Shingo model also uh, puts emphasis on, on standardized work and that it's, it's the basis for today, which we should improve tomorrow, but then we need to update the standards so we don't uh, fall back on, on our previous uh, habits. So I think all of these are, are conditions rather than sets of tools or best practices for, for actually framing problems and, and creating the learning organization. And of course, all with a focus on, on uh, customer satisfaction. Uh, but um, in, the, in the Lean Sensei book, of course, um, 
we present Toyota production system as just one of the learning systems that Toyota have uh, developed over the years. Um, and I think uh, the other three uh, learning systems which we talk about within that, uh, within that book are, are also just as important, if not even more important. But of course, the Toyota production system is the go-to learning system for those of us uh, skilled and educated within, within a traditional view of, of lean production. I think just to name the other three systems, we have the uh, what we call the Hoshin Canary or the product planning system. It's where we uh, uh, in Toyota the whole the whole business strategy is quickly broken down into products and product families, product lines. So it's uh, what, what, how do we keep this vision, maintain this vision of one-time customer, lifetime customer. So you see that the range of vehicles Toyota have, you, you have a car to start your driving career with, you know, a small uh, small car that you might learn to drive in. And then you go through the different models and ranges and platforms um, to, to, to those of us who are maybe uh, more in our management and executive careers today driving around the Lexus, you know, it's the premium segment. So I think they, they have something to offer every customer. And I think that's the whole idea is that once they, they've got you, they want to keep you there. So that's the product planning uh, learning system. How do we learn uh, about what, what products to, to maintain, which to change and which to keep? Um, and then there's the uh, product development system, Toyota product and process development system, which is very much governed by the Shusa system, the chief engineer, who is the product of her family, her product family, the, the, the president of her product family, basically. So they have uh, the chief engineer have a, complete control over everybody who have a contribution to make within that uh, designing, developing and delivering that product. And I think that's a, that's a core to the learning system as well, that we share the learning from production to engineering and vice versa. Um, then, of course, we have the Toyota production system as a learning system. And then the final part is the to Toyota total quality control uh, learning system, which um, to many might sound that it's about quality. Uh, but it's more about the control and the management. So how do we manage for quality? And it's a leadership thing again. So how, how do we ensure that the back office functions and those that are supporting uh, the production are helping to design and maintain a quality system throughout the organization? So these four learning systems together create uh, the, the success of what Toyota have realized over the past, uh, past 100 years. Yeah? Uh, yeah, so in, in the book, The Lean Sensei, uh, we, we summarize that learning is actually at the heart of lean. So, so lean is much better described as an education system rather than a production system. And I think these four learning systems really pay uh, the focus for, for creating this education system. It's, it's how do we go about to creating not just an, an army of problem solvers within our organization. I know that's quite a, a popular term in, in the lean uh, lingo, right? Creating an army of problem solvers. But it's how do, how do we create an army of learners? How do we encourage people to learn individually, as individuals and as teams and as a whole organization, uh, not just to solve problem after problem, but to, to learn from the problem solving and redeploy that learning across the organization? So I think that's, uh, that's a very important distinction with, with creating an, an army of uh, learners within an organization. So that brings us to the digital transformation part. And I mean, the, the digital transformation is fascinating. It's, it's, uh, we, we're able here to, to gather us, right? We have, uh, we have participants. Ruth is over in uh, Ottawa. I'm here in uh, Kongsberg in Norway. You guys, some of you are over in the United Arab Emirates. I mean, we're together, but we're across space and time. Huh? Digitalization is fantastic, but... Uh, we can also fall into some traps. And I think this is also the same with the lean transformation. I think you only need to look at the research which has been done. It's, I mean, the, all of these change management programs have <laughs> up 80, 90% failure rate. So only one in 10 are successful um, with, their, with their digital transformation, lean transformation or otherwise. And I would say, if, if, what, what is the definition of success? And I think if you're able to solve more problems for your customers with, with less resources, then, then we're, we're succeeding in our digital lean or lean digital transformation. Um, so, but I mean, before, before we start on digital transformations, it's really worth 
stopping, take taking the time, go to Gamba, see, understand the real problems, and and think. So I think, um, it, it, yeah, it, it's a very high risk that uh, organizations, executives sit back and and let the consultants do the thinking for them, and and let the digital tools do the thinking for them, and. It, no, we still need to think as human beings, especially as as managers within organizations. Um, so, so before we embark on a digital transformation, it's really important to understand what are the core problems which are preventing us from uh, achieving our our business challenge. Right. So, what, what is what is the whole idea of the business? What is this one time customer, lifetime customer vision that the that the business has, and what are the problems which are stopping us from achieving that vision? So we did a little piece of research, um, particularly working with some SMEs in, in Wales and in uh, in Norway, where we looked at how SMEs were uh, more or less falling into this uh, trap of uh, the, the digitalization paradox. You know that that we, if we buy and implement digital tools, we should become much more productive. But actually, the paradox says uh, this is often not the case. You buy and invest in digital tools, and you become less productive. Um, so so we really need to understand that, and I think. The way we looked at this, when, when we first started with having these um, en encounters with the SMEs who are interested in digitalization as universities and, and research institutes, we found out that actually no, these, these companies really should be looking at lean first before they go to digitalization. Because if you digitalize a bad process, you're just going to get uh, bad results. Uh, or worse results, in fact. So I think uh, this lean first, then digitalize uh, message came very clear for us uh, in the past uh, couple of years. Um, and we also discovered that actually, especially when SMEs are involved, maybe it's not digitalization that they're they're really uh, intending on. I mean, uh, some SMEs can make much uh, more improvement just by focusing on digitization which uh, in essence is making analog information in a digital format, right? So, so going away from all the paperwork and making things more digital. Um, so, so the difference there between digitization and digitalization is that digitalization is, is really the application of, uh, of innovative digital te technologies to disrupt the way in which we do business. And I mean, the many SMEs don't really need to disrupt the way they do business because a lot of SMEs are still... Uh, in, in startup phase, right? So it's uh, they're still growing the business. So I think rather than disrupt a growing business, they should work with lean and, 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 and take the simple steps first and then establish their growth path. So that was just an interesting observation we made from working with SMEs. Um, um, it's just a couple of examples of, of some of the lean and digitization stuff that I've been involved in. So uh, previously working for Kongsberg, um, one of the things we started with was uh, Kaizen meetings within the, the different teams in production, um, which was uh, basically based on a uh, whiteboard with some cards we write on and put up some suggestions on the board and we, we, we give them an owner and we, and we basically progress them through a what could be considered a Kanban board, actually, from uh, new suggestions in the backlog to do, doing, and done. So we move them across the board. What we did was uh, started. We started with this actually in 2014, and people people instantly said, "Daryl, it's 2014. Why are we doing this on a whiteboard with pen and paper?" I said, "Because there's no need to go digital yet. We don't we don't encounter that problem to go digital. These are suggestions for your team locally to try and get you into the uh, you know into the habit of of doing small improvements. Um, but after some time, we encountered the the problem and the challenges that actually a lot of a lot of the suggestions that were coming up involved other departments, involved other uh, members of staff, uh, maybe even other sites within the organization." So in that case, we started to, to put this uh, suggestion system on Teams using the planner function. So it's a, again, it's a card-based system, but it's a digital card-based system. So we had the same format where we met as a, as a team on the shop floor, but this time around a digital screen with a keyboard where we could look at the uh, suggestions in, in the planner and allocate them, not just in our team, but we can we can send them and communicate them with other teams in in. Uh, in the same building and indeed other teams across the world so we could we could route these uh, suggestions to the pro to the process or the problem owners um for example from norway to uh 
to our, our location down in Alicante in, in, in Spain, for example. Um, and so we, we built it, of course, I'm a researcher. So, so I, was, I was an undercover researcher at that time, being a lean program manager in industry, but, but we wanted to investigate well, what is the difference? Is it, is it better to have a digital system than a card-based system? And actually what we saw, we looked at four teams in, in particular. Uh, and we analyzed the way that they performed as a continuous improvement team uh, in an analog system compared to the digital system. Uh, and what we found is that there were uh, maybe uh, 15 to 30% more suggestions um, with the digital system. Uh, the time to closure was much quicker. The time to routing them to the correct uh, responsible person was quicker. Um, so, so all in all, it was, it was a pretty advantageous thing to do. Um, but of course, we, we didn't need it at the beginning because we, it was new. So people need to understand how Kaizen works first before we go on this digital global system. And of course, you do, you do encounter some challenges as well with the digitization part because uh, not everybody is uh, just as tech savvy as, as, as everyone else. So some of the, uh, well, you, you might think some of the older members of staff were less tech savvy than the younger ones, but actually we saw some examples of the opposite. So, so where the older members of staff were actually teaching the younger ones how to use the system. So, but I think uh, regardless of age, I think that the level of awareness and competence in, in using digital tools specifically comes into play here when you, when you use digitization, which is also a learning element, right? So we, we have to, uh, like we said, going back to the delta L greater than delta C, we have to learn faster than the change if we're going to succeed and adapt. Um, one of the projects we're working with currently uh, within Europe um, is called Lean 4.0. <clears throat> and here we're looking at the integration of Lean and Industry 4.0. And I think back when we started scoping out this project many years ago, um, everybody was more or less focused on, yeah, no, we're going to, we're just going to add 40 to the to the lean tool right so vsm 40 kanban kanban 40 but i mean kanban come on toyota were using electronic kanban in 1990 with their <laughs> with their suppliers it's nothing 40 about e kanban um so so what we did is we put an action learning twist on this so it's again bringing learning into the forefront of, of lean and industry 40 is how can we bring together uh, a transnational team of researchers, practitioners, um, uh, and higher education institutions to solve real problems for industry using a combination of Lean and Industry 4.0. So that's really what we're looking at. And, and, and the vision here, uh, of course, I like you said, I, it's important to have a vision, right? So we, we are trying to educate the operations managers of the future. So what does the operations manager of the future need to know in order to succeed with a lean digital business? Um, I'm just going to present a couple of examples um, from, from this uh, project. But I think the, the most important message here is that uh, I think to quote Tai Jono, no problem is a big problem. If, if you're in lack of a problem, then you're, you really have a big problem, I think. Or improvement learning is driven by a problem and understanding the problem. So, so like we say here, problems are the raw material of learning. And I wrote uh, I wrote a short piece for uh, University of Wales Trinity St David, which is online. Nancy, maybe you've seen it about about the, the digitalization. Just like a lean journey needs to start and be grounded in a problem. Um, so it's um, and of course we encountered a discussion and okay, but. What if we have what if we have a new digital technology that we'd just like to test out and explore? And I was like, well, yeah, it's good, but I mean, a new digital technology should be uh, aimed at solving a problem, right? So, and I think that organizations have many problems which are very simple to align a technology and test it out and explore with. So, one of the things we've been exploring is this um, realware head-mounted uh, tablet. Uh, so I'm 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 quite fond of it. Uh, we're, we're we're developing the the virtual sense. Let's call it the virtual sensei concept. So rather than um, traveling for a physical meeting with executives in the factory, I think this was severely disrupted by the COVID pandemic. We were unable to to visit our clients and customers physically, 
So what we did is we is we got hold of one of these uh, head-mounted tablets, which you see Kenneth uh, wearing here at uh, one of our uh, client factories in in Norway. We can send this uh, with FedEx or, or whatever to to the to the factory, and 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 this gives us eyes and ears on the ground, so we can sit remotely and and go on a gamble walk together with the local uh, management team to go and see and to challenge the way things are, when things are happening. And I think. You see in the illustration on the left, it also has the problem at the center. So the whole idea with this uh, piece of technology is to help um, executives and managers discover the the right problems to help them with their business challenges. And of course, this whole problem discovery process is based on, on insightful questions. Uh, so, so we we ask questions to the local team. Uh, what, what's happening there behind you? Why is that machine on stop? For example, what does the red light mean? Why are there parts in that red bin? And I think just exploring these problems together with them actually brings new eyes uh, in into the system and challenges them to to reconsider the way they're they're working. And of course, this should uh, result in some action, uh, which can then drive learning. Uh, so it's it's all interlinked, these questions and reflection, and, and then also the need to bring in theory. So we have existing theory uh, in, uh, in, in the academic institutions. So maybe, maybe you can try some new things here in the, in the factory. So I think the, the whole realware uh, gig is, is is quite exciting, and I, yeah, I will uh, take it down. I have it with me today. I will uh, take it down to Germany next week, and, and we try out some uh, digital gamble walks uh, in Germany while I'm down there. So it should be fun. I think another wearable that we have is um, the, uh, the HoloLens. Uh, so here you see Manuel, it's an earlier colleague of mine, used to work in Sintef, now CEO of Kit AR, uh, which is a, a company, a startup, um, looking at the cognitive or cognitive augmentation of workers. Um, so <clears throat> the HoloLens is, is just a platform for, for the software and the, the apps and the development, right? So Kit AR is the software, which is on this uh, HoloLens platform. And they, they have several different modules within Kit AR. And I, I, I'm not an expert. I can't uh, tell you about them all now. But you can see a, a, an example picture in the background putting together. Is, uh, it's, it's basically an assembly process for a gear uh, a gearbox. So you get the standard work augmented on, on what you see. So you, you can have these uh, checks and the, the, the Kit AR uh, system itself will, will see that the operator has done the correct sequence or done the correct operations and will we'll go from red to green and will proceed to the next, uh, the next uh, task on, on, the, on the list. So I think this is also very useful for the zero defect manufacturing uh, idea and, and, and present, preventing defects in, in production. Um, they also have a very interesting module called Kit Insight, which can actually uh, capture the data uh, live from the, from the process and then can be analyzed uh, afterwards to, to actually go back and discover uh, problems and why they occurred. So I think it's, it's a very useful means for, for problem solving, but also for learning from problems before we know they are going to happen. Those are just two examples of some, uh, what, I, what I would say are core uh, digital tools for driving learning uh, in a lean organization in the digital era. Um, there are many more, of course. I'm not going to go into too much uh, of examples today, but we can, we can discuss them afterwards, I think. But um, big data, uh, Internet of Things, digital twins. I mean, everything has a role uh, somewhere within problem solving and problem discovery. So I think we, we need to be a little bit more aware of what we're using these uh, tools and techniques for, rather than rushing in and, and, and getting a digital twin because our competitors have got one. Um, to summarize, I think we're, we're coming to the end now. Um, something that stuck with me from my, my visits in Japan is this uh, good thinking, good products. Um, so I think, the, to make good products first, you have to make good people. Uh, so we have to have a system, a set of conditions, like I said, to, to promote thinking in and across the organizations. And I think once we get that to place uh, in place, I think, I think uh, opportunities are unendless. I mean, we can, we can find and identify many more problems to solve for the customer. And I think one of the best examples I saw in, uh, 
in my uh, career so far was the the, the case of uh, one of the companies we had in in the UK in Great Yarmouth, where over a three year period we had a four hundred percent productivity people productivity improvement. So we were producing twice as much with half the resources. I think that's uh, that's what Lean is about. It's not about thirty to fifty percent quality improvement. It's about growth, not optimization.